Welcome. So, in this lecture, we are going to talk about trajectory based current mode control design for proximate time optimal recovery. So, this lecture, if you recap, you know, in our previous lecture, we talked about time optimal recovery in a buck converter, and in this lecture, we want to see how the current mode control can be designed by using like a using a time domain approach so that we can approximately or nearly achieve that time optimal recovery using a closed loop control that is one of the objective. So, in this context we will also talk about large signal PI controller design tuning in current mode control buck converter and finally, we will try to identify what are the practical limits and constraint on, on controller gain selections. So, now we are going to start with the trajectory behavior of a boost converter in which here we are drawing x axis is the output voltage and y axis is the inductor current. And here this particular trajectory, these lines indicate these are the trajectory, the family of curves, this is the on state trajectory, on state trajectory, on state trajectory and these are the off state trajectory, off state trajectory. So, and this is the initial condition where we will start with. So, there can be an arbitrary initial condition. So, here the green line is the on state trajectory for the given initial condition and the switch is turned on when it is hitting this red line then switch is turned off and the blue line is the off state trajectory and then it comes to the steady state which is there is an on off operation. And if you draw the time domain waveform it will look like this in one cycle it recover and it comes to steady state and this is the inductor current ripple. Now, what is this line we will discuss this is a first order switching surface and it has certain slope. Now, what happen if we increase the slope of this line that means, this was the earlier case now we will increase the line slope. If we increase the line slope you will find the equivalent current waveform the current overshoot has increased and also you will see additional transient even after reaching here that means, there is an additional undershoot. So, this is because of the fact that we have increased the slope. So, that means, to reach steady state from uh, initial point here can we achieve in one switching action that means, after one switching can we reach there and then whether this surface is it a linear surface straight line how then if it is a straight line then what is the optimal slope. So, if we increase the slope then what happen the higher slope more power current overshoot voltage undershoot and very high slope there can be inductor core saturation or voltage might collapse. Now, we want to link that how this switching surface is linked with our controller. So, one of the link is that this switching surface can be written as because you can see the y axis is the output voltage axis and x axis is the inductor current axis. So, this straight line can be written as some gain into current loop error current where this is the average current some gain into voltage error. And if you normalize K c that means, you divide K c because they are equal at the point of transition then this K p is nothing but. So, this K p is nothing but k v y k c. So, that we have one degree of freedom and this k p is my slope this is the slope of this line. So, this equation indicate what this equation indicate that this inductor current is compared with this rest of the quantity it is here and at the point of switching they are equal and that is becoming 0 that is a switching law. And what is this you can see there is a proportional control into error voltage which is contributed by this term. So, if we use a different color. So, this is the term 
which is here this particular block and this is a term which is here. And what is IL average for boost converter? The average inductor current is a normalized gain into load current. And what is that fact? So, this normalized gain that means if we want to normalize the load current in terms of the average current it will be k n will be equal to v 0 by v in and if you multiply then you will get you will normalize the load current. So, that means this term should carry some sort of load feed forward with normalize. So, this is the normalize that means we have represented this that means if we increase the slope so this is a test result. If we use a smaller slope then it is not recovering in one switching cycle. If we increase the slope it is more or less recovered in one switching cycle. So, this is a test result and if you further increase there will be a further current overshoot which might cause more like a inductor saturation or it can increase you know the current overshoot and also it will cause some voltage undershoot and overshoot. So, as a result it may take longer time. So, what are the tuning objective? identify the optimal gain which will achieve something similar to this and then how to incorporate integral gain so that you can also because only proportional gain is not enough we need to incorporate the integral gain so that you can ensure zero steady state error. So, now we want to summarize what are the process for linking buck converter current mode control with phase plane trajectory and how can we achieve those gains mathematically what are the steps. So, if you look at buck converter again this is a phase plane output voltage in x axis inductor current in y axis. So, initially it was running under one load condition which is I 0 and now the I 0 has changed to I 0 plus delta I 0 and this blue line is the on state trajectory and the red one is the off state trajectory and here earlier we saw just a one line for the intersection, but now we have introduced a hysteresis band of delta i h. So, that our current ripple and the have band will be more or less same and now once it hit this limit then it turns off when it hit the lower limit it turn on. So, by that way your this periodic behavior will be written and this is under steady state it will achieve something like this kind of current ripple. So, what is the equation of this dotted line sigma equal to 0? So, it is again we have discussed in the normalized sense it is I l minus I ref plus k p into V 0 minus V ref where k p is the proportional gain and I ref is in the buck converter it is the average in the current which is nothing but the load current. And if we incorporate this hysteresis band then we can figure out how can we get sigma 1 and sigma 2 equation which are nothing but the same they have the same slope of sigma parallel line, but with a separate then we have introduced a hysteresis term. And these things are discussed in detail in lecture number 50 in our earlier NPTEL course which is a control and tuning method. Now, this is the equation of the this particular dotted line and if we take the sigma 1 there will be a hysteresis band sigma 2 there is another hysteresis band again this is discussed. So, now you see the surface looks like here if we remember our earlier at the point of switching if I take this term right side. So, I will get I l equal to I ref plus k p v ref minus v 0. So, and what is I ref? If this is a load current feed forward. So, if you recall our earlier for the boost converter we have shown that if you put a comparator. So, comparator will compare our inductor current and this is a comparator and then we have the load feed forward that means this is our load current. So, here it is equal to load current plus so this is an addition term plus we have a proportional control and then we have the error voltage and what is error voltage it is v ref minus v 0 that is it. So, it is a current mode control 
with load current feed forward, but only proportional control may not ensure zero steady state error. So, that is why we are modifying the sigma the k p into v error that we have discussed and if we take this term out that means, if we rewrite this equation what was our sigma if you rewrite everything you take that means, it is i l minus i 0 and it is equal to 0. So, you can multiply a negative sign that means, sigma equal to 0 if we even multiply with a negative sign sigma dot. So, it will be just rearranging this is now I 0 which was the reference current this is the current feedback this is the integral gain we have added an extra term and this was there because this is like this k p into this error voltage term. So, it will look like a proportional p i controller in current mode control with load feed forward. Now, we have to tune we have to obtain this proportional gain and the integral gain that is the tuning objective. So, now you will see the proportional controller will decide the slope of the surface and which is the first action which will drive the trajectory to reach more or less one switching cycle. Whereas, the integral action is designed to achieve zero registered error. So, it is a very slow process the objective is to just to eliminate the error or basically the any offset. So, the effect due to integral action to be neglected during the large signal recovery and the proportional control is primarily driving the one switching action recovery. So, that is the objective. So, next we are integral that means, integral gain since it is a slow process it is neglected during large signal transient, but it has actually effect when it comes close to steady state we want to eliminate the steady state error. So, that is why we are designing the integral gain using the small signal model. So, in the small signal model if you recall you know lecture number that means, we are talking about p i controller design and you know if you go to uh, go back to the current mode controller design we typically choose the integral gain to be crossover frequency by f m into v in and crossover frequency we can take you know one tenth of the switching frequency that means, f s w 2 pi that by 10 which is nothing but 2 pi by 10 t and this is here. And what is f m? Here if you recall that we talked about the modulator gain in current mode control with a ram compensation it is 1 by m c plus m 1 into t where m 1 is the rising slope of the inductor current rising slope of I l and m c is the ram compensation. So, if you recall in our earlier NPTEL course Ridley model we have discussed where the f m the modulator gain can be shown as 1 by m c plus m 1 into t and this is if you go to Ridley model that means, if you go to Ridley model you will get the modulator gain 1 by m c plus m 1 into t. Now, so k i can be written as if you substitute 2 pi m c plus m 1 by 10 v in if you if you substitute all this and then so that we can get the integral gain from small signal model. How do you get proportional gain? So, the proportional gain can be derived by using the phase plane geometry where we need to achieve the transgenic one switching action. Here we will consider the load will start from the initial load current I 0 1 with V rep. So, we are neglecting the effect due to ripple in this derivation as if it is starting from this point then it hit this point where the current is I 1 and V 1 current and voltage and then it turns off the off state trajectory it take I 0 2 this is this point is my I 0 2 and V rep that means, the current is I 0 2 voltage is V rep. So, this method of derivation is discussed in lecture number 15 in our earlier NPTEL control and tuning method. So, I am not discussing detail, I am just summarizing the result. So, if you take a current mode control, buck converter, current mode control implementation, we are using a load current feed forward with a normalized gain of Kn, feedback gain H. So, here 
GVC the voltage controller. So, here we are assuming H to be 1 that means we are not putting any voltage feedback gain, but if we use it that means any step down factor then we have to accordingly change the large signal derivation we have to scale it. So, here H equal to 1 we are taking just a PI controller using the earlier derivation in lecture number 50 we can find the proportional gain is twice C by L delta I 0. What is delta I 0? It is a load step size, load step size. V in is the input voltage, L is the inductor, C is the capacitor. What is V q? V q equal to V rep during the step up transient, V in minus V rep during the step down transient. And when the input due to ratio is near to 50 percent, they are actually identical. And we have already discussed how to derive the integral gain. So, we have derived proportional gain and integral gain using uh, you know the large signal tuning and normalized gain here is 1 and this is also discussed in lecture number 50 in our earlier course. Now, the same method the problem here if you find out that means you know if you calculate for example, in our case. So, we are talking about this derivation. Now, suppose for our case we our capacitor is let us say 200 microfarad, inductor is 0 0.5 micro Henry and let us say we have applied a load step size of 20 ampere. Then what is my k optimal gain proportional? It will be twice 200 divided by 0.5 into 20 and it is V in into V rep. So, let us say our V in equal to 12 volt and V rep equal to 1 volt. So, it will be 12. So, that means if you calculate what you will get? You will get 400 divided by 10. So, if you just uh, it will be 10 square root of 12 that means it will be 2 root 3 and what will be the value? you will get k optimal to be roughly around how much 40 that means 80 into root 3 and root 3 is 1.7 uh, what is the root 3 value? So, it will be um, around 1.732 right what is that? 1.732 and you multiply with 80. So, how much you will get? So, around 130 to 140 yeah. So, it is around 130 roughly around 130 like that. So, it is a very large gain and we will see this large gain may lead to instability. So, that means what do you want to mean the derivation of this large signal model gives us a large value which the system may not tolerate and it can be there can be large overshoot undershoot or it may be unstable. Then the next step so we have discussed this suppose we have a gain limit because we want to implement this controller using analog, but our proportional gain should not exceed 20 and here we got around 130. So, which is not acceptable then what to do? We remember the sigma, what was sigma? It was if you remember correctly, it was k p what was sigma? It was k p into v error k i into error d t plus what is that? i 0 minus i l and this will be 0 at the point of switching. Now, at the point of switching we can always normalize. So, suppose the whole term I multiplied by that means what I am saying I multiplied by some uh, you know some fraction some fraction k f. Let us say I set k f to be 20 by 130, which means whatever k p we got 
Now, this Kp or this is basically a factor of attenuation, I want to attenuate this gain. So, I want to attenuate this gain, this is a factor of attenuation. Then what is this attenuation factor? So, this attenuation factor will be 20 by 30. So, all values will be attenuated that means, that means my if you multiply then this K P will be attenuated, K I will be attenuated and this current loop feedback gain also should be attenuated. So, everything will be attenuated then it will resemble the same thing. So, this is exactly what we are doing. So, suppose I have a gain upper range is 20. So, I want to find out what was my calculated optimal gain from the analytical derivation. I will take, I will find out the attenuation ratio by K P by this at, uh, actual. So, which was around 130 and this we want to get 20 for example. So, my attenuation factor will be something like you know this attenuation factor will be 20 by 130. This K i now our present K i will be attenuated multiply by this attenuated factor with the original K i gain and similarly this, this factor will be just the attenuation factor. If you do that then we can implement this logic with a realistic value of Kp and we should get. But you may find that this gain may be too small because if this is too small the effect of current loop I mean the we are stepping down the current loop by a large factor and which may inject noise. So, we have to be careful and we will see some practical constant particularly when you go to digital control. So, that means if we take K p we have to find out the attenuation factor and we know how to find the attenuation factor and this K n will be our the feed forward gain that the current loop which include the load feed forward that means the K n will be I 0 minus I L. So, this is actual inductor current and this is load current, but the actual inductor and load current they will be in the same scale. Then once you get Kp, then you have to get discrete time Kp which is same as continuous time and the discrete time integral gain will be continuous time integral gain into sampling time. So, this is discussed this conversion method in lecture number 43. So, in summary, so in the next lecture we are going to take MATLAB case studies and we want to see what are the practical constant and what are their limit. So, in this lecture we have discussed we have recapitulated the time optimal recovery in a buck and also how does it look like in boost converter. We have discussed large signal PI controller tuning in a current mode control buck converter and we have identified some practical limit and some constraint on the controller gain. So, in the next lecture we want to show how does it look like when you want to simulate this using digital current mode control. That is it for today. Thank you very much.